Marcel Andre Henri Felix Pettiot, the 17th of January 1897, the 25th of May 1946, was a French doctor and serial killer. He was convicted of multiple murders after the discovery of the remains of 23 people in the basement of his home in Paris during World War II. He is suspected of the murder of around 60 victims during his lifetime, although the true number remains unknown. Early life Marcel Petit was born on the 17th of January 1897 in Auxerre, Yin, France. At the age of 11, Petit fired his father's gun in class and propositioned a female classmate for sex. In his teenage years, he robbed a post box and was charged with damage of public property and theft. Petit was ordered to undergo a psychiatric evaluation resulting in charges being dropped when it was discovered that he had a mental illness. Later accounts make various claims of Pediot's delinquency and criminal acts during his youth, but it is unclear whether they were invented afterwards for public consumption. A psychiatrist reaffirmed Pediot's mental illness on the 26th of March 1914. After being expelled from school many times, he finished his education in a special academy in Paris in July, 1915.Petiot volunteered for the French army in World War I, entering service in January 1916. He was wounded and gassed during the Second Battle of the Aisne, and exhibited more symptoms of a breakdown. Petty was sent to various rest homes, where he was arrested for stealing army blankets, morphine, and other army supplies, as well as wallets, photographs, and letters. He was jailed in Orleans. In a psychiatric hospital in Fleury les Aubries, Petty was again diagnosed with various mental illnesses, but was returned to the front in June 1918. He was transferred three weeks later after he allegedly injured his own foot with a grenade, but was attached to a new regiment in September. A new diagnosis was enough to get him discharged with a disability pension. Medical and political career after the war, Petty had entered the accelerated education program intended for war veterans, completed medical school in eight months, and became an intern at the mental hospital in Evreau. He received his medical degree in December 1921 and moved to villeneuve as Yon, where he received payment for his services both from the patients and from government medical assistance funds. At this point, Petty was already using addictive narcotics. While working at villeneuve as Yon, he gained a reputation for dubious medical practices, such as supplying narcotics, performing illegal abortions, and petty theft. Petit's first murder victim might have been Louise de Laveau, an elderly patient's daughter with whom Petit had an affair in 1926. De Laveau disappeared in May of that year, and neighbors later said they had seen Petit load a trunk into his car. Police investigated but eventually dismissed her case as a runaway. That same year, Petit ran for mayor of Villeneuve as you are young and hired somebody to disrupt a political debate with his opponent. He won, and while in office embezzled town funds. The following year, Petit married Georgette Lablace, the 23-year-old daughter of a wealthy landowner and butcher in Sagnalay. Their son Gerhard was born in April, 1928. The prefect of Jan received many complaints about Pediot's thefts and shady financial deals. He was eventually suspended as mayor in August 1931 and resigned. However, Pediot still had many supporters, and the village council also resigned in sympathy. Five weeks later, on the 18th of October, he was elected as a councillor of Jan department. In 1932, he was accused of stealing electricity from the village and lost his council seat. By this point, he had already moved to Paris. In Paris, Petty had attracted patients with fake credentials and built an impressive reputation for his practice at 66 Rue de Cauau Martin. However, there were rumors of illegal abortions and excessive prescriptions of addictive remedies. In 1936, Petit was appointed Medicine d'état civil, with authority to write death certificates. The same year, he was briefly institutionalized for kleptomania, but was released the following year. He persisted in tax evasion. World War II activities after the 1940 German defeat of France, 
French citizens were drafted for forced labor in Germany. Pettiot provided false medical disability certificates to people who were drafted. He also treated the illnesses of workers who had returned. In July 1942, he was convicted of overprescribing narcotics, even though two addicts who would have testified against him had disappeared. He was fined 2,400 francs. Pettiot later claimed that during the period of German occupation, he was engaged in resistance activities. He supposedly developed secret weapons that killed Germans without leaving forensic evidence, planted booby traps all over Paris, had high-level meetings with Allied commanders, and worked with a non-existent group of Spanish anti-fascists. There is no evidence to support any of these statements. However, in 1980, he was cited by former U.S. spy master Carl John F. Grombach as a World War II source. Grombach had been founder and head of a small independent espionage agency, later known as The Pond, which operated from 1942 to 1955. Grombach asserted that Pettiot had reported the Katyn Forest Massacre, German missile development at Pinamund and the names of Abwehr agents sent to the U.S. While these claims were not supported by any records of other intelligence services, in 2001, some pond records were discovered, including a cable that mentioned Pettiot. Fraudulent escape network Pettiot's most lucrative activity during the occupation was his false escape route. Under the codename, Dr. Eugene, Pettiot pretended to have a means of getting people wanted by the Germans or the Vichy government to safety outside France. Pettiot claimed that he could arrange a passage to Argentina or elsewhere in South America through Portugal, for a price of 25,000 francs per person. Three accomplices, Raoul Fourier, Edmund Pintard, and René Gustave Nizendet, directed victims to Dr. Eugene, including Jews, resistance fighters, and ordinary criminals. Once victims were in his control, Pettiot told them that Argentine officials required all entrants to the country to be inoculated against disease, and with this excuse injected them with cyanide. He then took all their valuables and disposed of the bodies. At first, Pettiot dumped the bodies in the Seine, but he later destroyed the bodies by submerging them in quicklime or incinerating them. In 1941, Pettiot bought a house at 21 Rue Les Sueurs, near the Arc de Triomphe. He purchased the house the same week that Henri Lafont returned to Paris with money and permission from the Abwehr to recruit new members for the French Gestapo. Pettiot failed to keep a low profile. The Gestapo eventually found out about him, and by April 1943, they had heard all about this route for the escape of wanted persons, which they assumed was part of the resistance. Gestapo agent Robert Jodcom forced prisoner Ivan Dreyfus to approach the supposed network, but Dreyfus simply vanished. A later informer successfully infiltrated the operation, and the Gestapo arrested Fourier, Pintard and Nassandit. Under torture, they confessed that Dr. Eugene was Marcel Pettiot. Nitzandit was later released, but three others spent eight months in prison, suspected of helping Jews to escape. Even under torture, they did not identify any other members of the resistance because they knew of none. The Gestapo released the three men in January 1944. Discovery of murders On the 11th of March 1944, Pediat's neighbors in Sur complained to police about a foul stench in the area and large amounts of smoke billowing from the chimney of the house. Fearing a chimney fire, the police summoned firemen, who entered the house and found a roaring fire in a coal stove in the basement. In the fire, and scattered in the basement, were human remains. In addition to those found in his basement, human remains were also found in a quick lime pit in the backyard and in a canvas bag. In his home, enough body parts were found to account for at least ten victims. Also scattered throughout his property were suitcases, clothing, and the sordid property of his victims. The media reaction was an intense media circus, with news reaching Switzerland, Belgium, and Scandinavia. Evasion and capture during the intervening seven months, 
Petty had hit with friends, claiming that the Gestapo wanted him because he had killed Germans and informers. He eventually moved in with a patient, Georges Rudaut, let his beard grow, and adopted various aliases. During the liberation of Paris in 1944, Petiot adopted the name Henri Valéry and joined the French Forces of the Interior FFI, in the uprising. He became a captain in charge of counter-espionage and prisoner interrogations. When the newspaper Resistance published an article about Petiot, his defense attorney from the 1942 narcotics case received a letter in which his fugitive client claimed that the published allegations were mere lies. This gave police a hint that Petit was still in Paris. The search began anew, with Henri Valéry among those who were drafted to find him. Finally, on the 31st of October, Petit was recognized at a Paris metro station, and arrested. Among his possessions were a pistol, 31,700 francs, and 50 sets of identity documents. Trial and sentence Petty was imprisoned in La Sante prison. He claimed that he was innocent and that he had killed only enemies of France. He said that he had discovered the pile of bodies in 21 Rue Les Sur in February 1944, but had assumed that they were collaborators killed by members of his resistance network. But the police found that Petty had no friends in any of the major resistance groups. Some of the resistance groups he spoke of had never existed, and there was no proof of any of his claimed exploits. Prosecutors eventually charged him with at least 27 murders for profit. Their estimate of his gains ran to 200 million francs. Petty went on trial on the 19th of March 1946, facing 135 criminal charges. René Flo Riot acted for the defense against a team comprising state prosecutors and 12 civil lawyers hired by relatives of Pediot's victims. Pediot taunted the prosecuting lawyers, and claimed that various victims had been collaborators or double agents, or that vanished people were alive and well in South America under new names. He admitted to killing just 19 of the 27 victims found in his house and claimed that they were Germans and collaborators, part of a total of 63 enemies killed. Flo Riot attempted to portray Petty as a resistance hero, but the judges and jurors were unimpressed. Petty was convicted of 26 counts of murder, and sentenced to death. On the 25th of May, Petty was beheaded, after a stay of a few days due to a problem in the release mechanism of the guillotine. See also Carlin Gu John Bodkin Adams Thomas Neal Cream Holly Harvey Griffin H. H. Holmes William Palmer Murderer Maxim Petrov Harold Shipman Michael Swango References Bibliography Grombach, John, 1980. The Great Liquidator. Garden City, N.Y., Doubleday. Kershaw, Alistair, 1955. Murder in France. London, Constable. King, David, 2011. Death in the City of Light, the Serial Killer of Nazi-Occupied Paris. Crown. ISBN 9780307452894. Mader, Thomas, 1980. The Unspeakable Crimes of Dr. Pettiot. Boston, Little, Brown and Company Seth, Ralph, 1963. Pettiot, Victim of Chance. London, Hutchinson. Tomlins Marilyn Z. 2013. Die in Paris, Raven Crest Books, London. ISBN 9781482752809. Jordan Edward, 2017. Devil's Score. A Tale of Decadent Omen. Amazon Publishing. ISBN 9781973429883. External links. Newton, Michael. Dr. Marcel Pettiot. Crime Library. Serial Killers. Archive from the original on the 3rd of November 2011. Retrieved the 10th of November 2011. Tomlins, Marilyn Z. Dr. Petty will see you now in Crime Magazine.